This is Andy from HowEFIWorks.com. Today I want to talk about how every engine has an operating range. Let's call it a footprint. This is your typical footprint you might see in the sand. There is a definite perimeter that a footprint can make. Now, it might change a little bit if you're standing on sand or concrete, but given that you don't change a shoe or change weight significantly, there's a very definite perimeter to the footprint. A motor has a very similar footprint-like range in which you can get to. If you notice down at the bottom in this screenshot, I have RPM along the bottom, MAP, manifold absolute pressure on the vertical scale, and out in the center is every point in the plot where that motor got during this run. This happens to be about 30 minutes of a race of which all the data on the right side is generally race data. Anything on the left is either running around in the pits, getting onto course, or driving during a caution. This particular motor operates pretty much above about 5,000 RPM while on course. Now if we open up the histogram view in Megalog Viewer HD, what we will see is I've chosen, again, RPM along the bottom, manifold absolute pressure on the left, and out in the field is the VE. Notice that these lines tend to run vertical. They almost never run horizontal, except at the full throttle area of the plot. Down here at the bottom is the downshift, and idle would be somewhere in the lower left corner. It's interesting to note, though, that there is a very definite range in which this motor can get to. This happens to be the same scatter plot view of a typical turbo drift motor. Notice that below about 2300 RPM, he virtually cannot get into boost. But once he gets above 23, if he's in the throttle, he can get onto boost. Along the top is the boost control. And again, in the lower right is the downshift area where he's completely out of the throttle. I happen to have the color as power scaled don't worry too much about the units on this. What it is showing though, is anywhere that's red or orange is the high power area of the motor or high horsepower. And in the lower left, the blue is where he's completely out of the throttle. Now, if we look at that same motor in histogram view, where the color now is volumetric efficiency or VE1 in the Megasport world, you can see where again he is traveling through the map. Where in the lower left corner is the idle and low horsepower area. Top right is the full throttle area. Notice that there are a lot of cells you never get to while driving. I happen to have filled in what we might want to fill in as reasonable numbers. The reason you'd want to do that is if you notice, here is a place right there where you bumped out of what you would normally consider the normal envelope. If you never got to tuning this cell, you might not have any information there. So what I do is if you notice this is going from 60 to 78, let's go ahead and fill in by hand in your VE table, maybe 80 up here, 74, 72 is in this area. And again on the right, do the same thing, just estimate. The reason you do that is if you're out near the perimeter of a cell, the last cell you tuned, the code will look at the cells surrounding and see what the trend is. And you want to definitely have numbers in that area just in case you ever get there. But again, over here, you will never get there. But it's also nice to go ahead and estimate what that number may have been. So now, this is that same turbo motor. What I'm showing is how you've been out or set your brake points for manifold air pressure. This is the same VE table. All I've done is changed the progression. Notice it runs from 750 to 7700 on both plots. It also runs from 30 kPa up to 225. All I've done is changed how the numbers progress from bottom to top or left to right. In the yellow is where you would be in the relatively low horsepower range in the top right, above and to the right of the red, is where you're hard in the power. What we are doing in giving ourselves tuning cells of where we spend most of the time driving. But a little point is, notice how we go from, right there is about a 35 VE 
up to 60. That is a fairly non-linear change in volumetric efficiency, so you may want to actually even give more data points from about 75 to 120 to make that transition in tuning a little smoother. Again, notice there are cells that we never get to, but there are a few more unused cells on the plotting on the left compared to what's on the right. It's just a matter of efficiently using our cells and giving ourselves tuning points for where we need transitions. This is the footprint on four different motors. Notice on the upper left, this is a supercharged jet ski. This happens to be a centrifugal blown motor. Along the top is the full power, the downshift, and this is the idle in the lower left. This is where you spend most of your time. But at full throttle, we get here. I'm not sure you can see it at this resolution, but there are a few dots out here. So again, that's where you would want to estimate your VE, but you almost never get there. On the lower left is a the same turbo drift car, and notice how this envelope or footprint is very different than the supercharged jet ski. On the top right happens to be a large variable valve timing V8 motor. This happened to be a Ford motor race car that I got the data from. Notice how he has almost no data up in the upper left. You could get to 100 kPa, but because it's such a torquey motor driving around the pits, he never gets there. The data on the right is when he's out on course, and you can see in the middle where he throttle steers his car, where he's backing in and out of the power. Up here on the right is his full power, and notice how he can come all the way along the map, very low maps of him, in the neighborhood of 12 to 15 kPa. On the bottom right is a small displacement race motor, and notice how he almost never gets in this area. Again, every once in a while he does. That happens to be maybe his IAC valve uh, got caught in the wrong position. All sorts of things can cause that, but he spends very little time there. But again, you'd want a VE number that's reasonable in that area. You'll never get there on a dyno. The other thing to notice is a dyno operator that you typically go to only really wants to talk about this full throttle area and that your AFRs are perfect. But in the real world, you're constantly transitioning up and down through the plot. The reason that you do want reasonable VEs down in these bottom right corners is every time you back out of the throttle and get back in, you want to have reasonable amount of fuel in the intake manifold, all your ports wetted down, so when the guy gets back in the power, the car transitions smoothly. These are the same four plots. All I've done is made the full throttle area a line in red, and the downshift in green. Notice that every one of these motors idles in about this lower left corner. The exception is the race motor. This motor has such a big cam, it really doesn't want to idle at all, so the owner doesn't even let it go there. This happens to be a plot of a twin turbo Ford street motor uh, towing a trailer. This is a rock stock motor. Uh, you get the characteristic red line at full throttle. No dots are outside of that red line. Here is your downshift area. I assume I didn't really get any data here, but notice that you spend lots of time at around 1700 RPM. Also notice on this twin turbo motor, he's getting up to 164 kPa in the intake at about 1700 RPM. You would want to have lots of tuning cells in this area where this is cruise with the torque converter locked up. And if you give it a little throttle, it pops to right there, one gear down. So that's where you'd want to have lots of tuning cells on a motor like that. In the lower left corner, what you're seeing is this is the idle area of the motor. Now what we're looking at is the typical VTEC motor. On the left is when I'm on the low cam. On the right side, above 5350 where I switch on the VTEC. A couple of things to notice here. Look at how nice and smooth the lower edge of the map is, but if you've never switched to the low cam, you'd probably have a line right down through this area. But since I have a low cam on the left, I get lots of good drivability in the lower left part of the map. The other thing to notice here is this particular motor runs right at 100 kPa in the intake until the VTEC opens. 
and then you can see the map slowly taper off to about 97 kPa. That is an indication that the throttle bodies are probably a little small for this motor. It could also be the air filters. We did test the motor later with no air filters and it made almost no difference. So here is two of the motors we've been working with shown at the same scale from 15 kPa up to 100. Both of these motors are naturally aspirated. The one on the top is the VTEC motor. On the bottom is the race motor. This is a 1980s technology motor with a big cam. Notice there's an entire area that he never gets to except occasionally where this motor has the VTEC and you can get to a nice mild cam, easy to tune. You can spend lots of time there. This motor is so raspy, he doesn't even attempt to drive it there. So in conclusion, what I want to point out is you do want to fill in reasonable numbers and all these cells you never really get to. These are very difficult, especially in the lower right, very difficult to get on, get into on a dyno. You want to have lots of adjustability where you spend time. You also want adjustability if you get large variations in VE. In this motor, notice that we jump from 38 on a VE up to 61. That's a fairly significant jump in about 30 kPa. So you might actually want to give a little more adjustability in this area so this motor can transition right through here easier. The other thing to notice is this motor at the 100 kPa line, which is right here, Notice his VEs are running about 50 to 60 all through here. That's an indication that the required fuel or the injector constant is probably a little wrong on this motor. And if this is early in the tuning process, you'd probably want to change the injector constant so that this row is closer to 100%. All motors should run about 100%. What happens is, is if you have that off, uh, you can run into some problems trying to get your, your startup and acceleration enrichments tuned in. You can also see where I filled in, or I would have filled in by hand, the VEs out of the range. And here's a prime example on the left side where he almost stalled the motor and he did get to here. So you'd probably be best off if you had 100, 150 there just because you never bothered to change it you would have flooded the motor as you got to that point. I would like to thank my friends at TunerStudio.com, the developers of Mega Log Viewer HD. This is the software I'm using to demonstrate and tune almost all of these motors. And be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.